Good morning, students. Today we will start with paper MB12, Unit 4, remaining portion of multicellular parasites and arthropod vectors. Last time we have completed with mosquito, flea, tick, and today we will start with mites, remaining part mites. Mites. Mites are actinides. They are tiny, fast moving, and live on outer surfaces of animals and plants. Demodex folliculorum and Demodex brevis, they are elongated microscopic mites that live in hair follicles or oil producing glands, usually skin of face and typically without producing any symptoms. Other species of mites cause human disease. Mites of the domestic animals and birds, they can cause any itchy rash in humans and they are present in hay, grains, cheese and dried fruits. The dust mites often live in large numbers in bedrooms and they can cause asthma when mites and their excreta is inhaled. The disease scabies caused by mite, Sarcoptis scabies, is characterized by an itchy rash prominently between fingers, underbreast, and genital area. Now, it is usually transmitted by personal contact and commonly acquired by sexual intercourse. The female bites and burrow into outer layer of epidermis, feeding and laying eggs over a lifetime of about one month. Allergy to the mite is mainly responsible for ET rash. Diagnosis is done by demonstrating the mites and since scabies mimics other skin disease also and that is why diagnosis is very difficult. Now the treatment for this which is accomplished by medications applied to skin. Sarcoptis scabies is not known to transmit any infectious agent. Here is the diagram you can see uh, Sarcoptis scabies that is scabies mite. The female mite burrow. Here you can see the root hair, hair roots and through these hair roots this mite enter in the outer layer of skin, that is skin surface, and further penetrate and burrow, burrowing here, burrow into the outer skin layer, and there it lays the egg. Okay? And then from the egg, the mature mite is formed, and that cause intensely itchy rash. This is the diagram of Sarcoptis scabies. Again, here you can see this rashes, red rashes on the skin when this mite entered into the skin through the hair follicles and oil glands in the upper layer of skin or outer layer of skin, burrowing, laying eggs, and then this female mite that cause itching and red rashes. The mites of rodents can transmit rickettsial disease to human. Rickettsial pox caused by rickettsia acari, it is transmitted by mouse mite and is mild disease which is characterized by fever and rash. Epidemics may occur periodically in cities of eastern US. 
serious rickettsial disease of other part of us they have been reported such as scrub typhus which is transmitted by rodent mites next is helminths as we know in addition to the arthropods that can lead to disease in human the other group of multicellular parasites that causes human diseases known as helminths in human helminths that cause diseases generally belongs to one of three classes the first one is nematodes also known as round worms second cystodes known as step worm third trematodes that is known as flukes now these helminths have been controlled in most of the developed countries or nations but still they continue to kill many million people in under developed countries or nation helminths enter in the body in a number of ways such as they have been eaten in contaminated food then pass through insect bites or directly penetrate in the skin they cause disease by invading human host tissues or robbing nutrients of the in the environment of the host tissue some of the helminths have complex life cycle involving one or more intermediate host where early stages of development occurs or takes place and a definitive host where sexually mature forms occur let's have first nematodes which are known as round worms nematodes have cylindrical tapered body with a tubular digestive system or tubular digestive tract which extend from mouth to anus there are both male and female nematodes many of the nematodes are free living in the soil as well as in the water there are some other nematodes which are parasites to the human animals as well as plants and can produce serious disease in these organism they are divided into groups first that is on uh, one that inhabit gastrointestinal tract of host and second that is one found in blood and other tissues of host generally diagnosis of worms infestation depends on microscopic examination of worms or their ova in clinical specimen or blood test for detection of antibodies against the worms here are the diagram as well as photograph of the nematodes ascaris lubricoides and waukeria bun crafty next is cystodes which is also known as tap worms tap worms have flat ribbon shaped bodies that are segmented the head of the tap tap worm or cystodes known as solex and has suckers for attachment and sometimes hooks directly behind the head is a region that produce reproductive segments and it is known as proglottids each segment has both male as well as female sex organs cystodes does not have digestive system but rather absorbs nutrients from the surrounding environment directly cystodes are often associated with bee lamb pork and fish 
transmission of these organisms to human often occur when the flesh of these animals is eaten either uncooked or undercooked. That means the meat or animal flesh is eaten uncooked, raw or not properly cooked. Some of these cystodes or tap worms are transmitted to humans from ingesting fleas infected with dogs or cat tap worms, especially in children which are playing in the field and I have already discussed in my earlier lecture. Now let's see life cycle of the pot tap worm, Tinea solium, which is acquired by eating improperly cooked pork. Human fecal matter contain ova, ovum or ova filled pro proglactics which is passed in human feces. Pig ingest embryonated ovum from human feces and in the flesh of pig, sister circles develop. When human eat improperly cooked pork, which is containing cystic sarcae, this cystic sarcae enter in the body of the human and cystic sarcus is developed into mature tap worm in the small intestine. Here you can see in the small intestine a mature tinea solium adult worm head portion which is known as scolex. The scolex is having hooked in its then suckers as well as behind the head reproductive organs known as proglottids. So again from the intestine it is passed in the fecal matter of human as a ova or ova filled proglottids. Ova ingested by human that can also lead to cystic sarcosis disease. Now this cystic sarcae also escape from the small intestine through the blood vessels and reaches to the brain and there it causes epilepsy. So how this warm tap warm is causing disease infection in human. Here you can have the diagram of these organisms, tinea solium and diphylobotrum latum. Next is stomatodes that's also known as flukes, bilaterally symmetrical, flat and leaf shapes. Tomatoes have suckers that hold organism in place as well as suck from the host. Most species are hermaphrodites. Most of them have complicated life cycle, which may include one or more intermediate hosts. Usually, worms begin with the larval form developing within egg, and these larvae escape into the environment and where they are taken up by one or more hosts such as snail. Eventually, last stage is a tail bearing larva known as sarcaria, which is released from snail and is ready to attach to susceptible host. Example, if human is wading or swimming in water and the sarcaria of Cystosoma mansoni have been discharged into water. Sarcaria can penetrate skin, circulate to the liver and intestine where it matures and lays eggs. Here is the diagram of Cystosoma mansoni sarcaria, the form that penetrates the skin and initiates the infection. 
water bud cystosomes may penetrate the skin of swimmers and then die causing swimmers itch let's see nematodes cystodes and trematodes which are infectious agents causing disease and characteristics of the disease first is nematodes that is also known as round worms okay in that first we'll see pin worms which is also known as anthrobus vermicularis and it causes the disease anthrobiasis disease is characterized by anal itching restlessness irritation nervous and poor sleep next is whip worms that is known as trichuris trichuria cause disease trichuriasis abdominal pain body bloody stool weight loss these are the characteristics of the disease next is hook worms that is known as nectar americanus hook worm disease cause anemia weakness fatigue physical and mental retardation in children next is thread worm that is strongloids stercolis causing disease strongloidosis skin rash at the site of penetration cough abdominal pains and weight loss next is ascaria ascaris lubricoids causing disease ascariasis abdominal pain live worm vomited or passed in stools next is trichinella trichinella spiralis trichinosis disease characteristics of the disease fever swelling of upper eyelids muscle soreness next is filaria which is very common in south gujarat waukaria bankrofti and brugia malai disease name is filariasis cause fever swelling of lymph nodes genital and extremities we know it as hathi phaga next is cystodes which is also known as pep worms first is fish pep worm that is diphylo bothrium latin pep worm disease characteristics few or no symptom sometimes anemia next is beef tap worm tinea saginata tap worm disease few or no symptom sometimes anemia pork tap worm tinea solian tap worm disease few or no symptoms sometimes anemia last is tomatoes also known as clothes sarcaria cystosoma mansoni this is name cystosomiasis liver damage malnutrition weakness and accumulation of fluid in abdominal cavity sarcaria of birds and other animals cause disease swimmers itch characteristics of the disease inflammation of the skin of itching here we complete this topic students here we complete this topic and the questions for the assignments are here which you prepared first question discuss various arthropods that transmit disease in humans and second helminths that cause disease in humans Thank you very much.